Welcome friends to CNS series of interviews from the 3rd Asia Pacific Feminist Forum or APFF 2017 being held in Chiang Mai, Thailand. APFF 2017 is organized by the Asia Pacific Forum on Women, Law and Development or APWLD as it is more commonly known as. In this episode, we are in conversation with Macha Fawn In who is a Thailand-based lesbian human rights defender and gender advocate. She is the founder director of Sangsan Anakot Yavachon, an organization that builds the capacity of stateless indigenous ethnic minority youth through scholarship programs for higher education. Her profession intersects youth, indigenous populations, women, the LGBTI community, human rights, marginalized people and education. What a vast array. Marcha, please share with our audience why you feel sexual health and rights and bodily autonomy are so important to you and the community oh, you work with. I might uh, go back to my uh, experiences where I born as a woman and I recognize that how my body led me to facing the different uh, form of oppression comparing with my brothers. So because of my body that I born with, my mom starting to decide that I should stop study when I was uh, 12 after I finished primary school. But I recognize that for the young woman, if you stop study, you will facing the issue of marriage when you are so young and then you will get pregnancy and then you will be young mother and carrying a lot of child so i i feel like at that i felt at that time i don't want to facing that the only one way for young women and girl to stop a forced marriage by cultures passing to families is to go to school but because of uh, i facing poverty my family is farmers and we are, you know, like just um, try to surviving by planting rice with no income. And I understand that they couldn't support me to go to school. So I learned to, you know, to working like a child labor to earn the money in the weekend that I can go to school. So then I fighting for my right to exit education. But at the same time, my brothers, my mother are not tell him to stop study, but he decide himself that he don't like to study. But I imagine at that time, if he just said, I want to go to school, I think my mom gonna fighting for him to go to school because in the deep roots of uh, patriarchal society, I uh, believe that man is the future, but women are someone who will just go somewhere. You will not you know like uh, destroy the money into something that is nothing for family so that's what i'm recognizing and i'm fighting so hard to go university and and i look back when um, the society are you know like projected on the woman body you know like how we are um, how, what, what we should see thing you know how our body should perform in front of everyone, you know, especially in the school. You can see like all the women are wear skirts and it's very long. And I have some like accident, like uh, my friend just ran and then she fell down because of the skirt so long. So we, we, I, this is all that I recognize that how we can exit just this without feeling our body, without recognize that because of our body, that's why we have been treated differently and we are lack of accessible in the same level at our brotherhood, you know, like we difficulty to exit education, we facing so hard to working and, you know, get higher education. So this is a, is back go back to my experience it and now when I study in university and when I complete I could recognize that we have a lot of young women who are facing in the same level as me when I'm so young and then without support many are just keep up of the education so I started my project by support young indigenous women 
school, their family cannot support to go to school because we want to work to end poverty, we want to uh, uh, work for a young age pregnancy and we want to support them to become the leader and to change the situation for a lot of women because our population is more than 50%. This is uh, how, if we are not considered of the bodies, if we are not considered of our gender, we will never accept justice for all. Maja, you are so very right. I remember as uh, a student myself, as a girl student, we were told to sit with our legs together. Yeah. Not, not talk very loudly. <laughs> this, it's all about bodily autonomy, which we never realized that time. Uh, we as feminists are talking about development justice. How do you think is bodily autonomy and sexual rights integral to development justice or are they separable from I it? I feel like it's, it cannot separate that because your body is together with how you can accessible to the space, how it show your voice, how is your performance, you know, which means that without carrying your body and gender and experiences, how can you accept the justice? It means if the women are not allowed to go to school, if the indigenous people are not accept the right for land, if the statelet are, you know, cannot holding their right as the human being, how they can accept justice? And that you can see a different level between you born as women and men that uh, a lot of uh, women are not support to go to school because of the lack of income or especially if they don't have a, a state le a citizenship status and and the state -led people are not allowed to uh, to move from where they are which means that state led means they are not refugee they are not recognized as the Thai people and they thick to where they are and not allowed to working not allowed to move so their body is stuck there especially if you are a woman and there is a five generation in the grandfather grandmother generation mothers and then daughter and if they are not go to school they're gonna have the child and they're gonna have grandchild so in five generation their body are fit are thick there they cannot move to access for education, to access for health and services, to access for anything similarly with the other who holding Thai citizen or any kind of citizenship status. So this is how important that we couldn't divide it, our body from access to justice. And because of our body that we, we born with vagina, that we are, have been treated differently because a lot of young women are torn to scare off, go out of their comfort zone, you know, like of their uh, community. Even they go to school, their family always told them that you better stop, or their family, uh, their community always think like, uh, if you, even you go to school, but you don't have any citizenship status, how can you access to the job? Because the law are told, are, you know, not allow you to work. So this is like, is together make them so far away to exit to education so for me you know it cannot divide it between your rights your sexual rights your sexual orientation your citizenship status your ethnic minorities or your indigenous data is all together and make many people are so far away to access for services, to access for equally. So we, which means that we need to recognize all of this and make priority that these people who are apply intersectionality and apply many forms of oppression to access similarly and equally and equities. Uh, Macha, you have experienced life on the borders of Thailand and Myanmar and maybe on either side of the border. Would you please share with us about the challenges which uh, the lesbians, bisexuals and transgender people face in Thailand and Myanmar? In what ways are they different and in what ways are they similar? All LGBTIQ are facing. The first thing that we have been ejects, not include to our institution started from family if you are transgender your family is starting to fail 
that they don't want you to have been bullying from the others. They try to force you to go back to the norm of the society, which means if you're born with vagina, you need to become a woman, you need to love a man. If you're born uh, with panic, you need to, you know, like uh, find a woman and then marry it and have a child. So that's the first place that all of the LBT have been excluded is, is the family that they are not recognized how diversity of human being because of the society are also not recognized that. The second is like in the school, you know, like when the school are on the text said that the LBT are, you know, abnormal. It's like in Thailand in the text still use that word. So, and then a lot of LGBT young people have facing a lot of violation and then in the religion, you know, in the law. In many countries, I recognize like in India or in Myanmar, being GLBT is uh, criminalized. In Thailand, it's not criminalized, but it's not legally. What does it mean? It means that no law recognize your sexual orientation. No law, your, no law is recognize your gender identity if you are not matched, that criteria, which means that male and females. If you are transgender, you know, like you need to shoot, you cannot shoot anything. It's, it started uh, from the sick at birth. The name is represent your sick at birth. It's not represent your, uh, it's not represent your identities. So, uh, which means that all institutions are ex exclude GLBT. And how different when in Thai context and in Myanmar context and in the marginalized context, example like uh, being ethnic minority or indigenous. I mean that in the deep, deep roots of the many indigenous are really tied up with the nature, which means that you're born with any um, fish, um, um, organ, organisms that this is your nature and it tie up with sexual orientation too that you need to love a man if you are born with vagina so this is the nature to against the nature you will have been punishment by you know like culture families and so then which mean that are uh, they more controlling by the cultures and then for the indigenous to move away if they cannot stay there is so difficult and they cannot be themselves in the communities. So which means that they cannot come out if they are lesbian or gay. But a lot of transgender who, exp or who you know, appearance, you know, that people can see and recognize that is not match the norm. So there will have been punishment a lot and, and, and a lot of, uh, how to say, my experience to working with them that they could from community and if something happened, example, like if the cow die or if the big rain or if the floods, the, the, you know, the, the villagers just came to them and thrown the stone to their house and, and push all the bad thing that because of you are against the natures. So which means that it will be very hard. Uh, for them to be in, in the community, but it's also impossible to go to the city because you cannot go to school. When you go to school, you have been a lot of bullying and your family are ashamed that you are GLBT, so it not support you to go to school, which means you don't have education, which means you cannot leave your community, but at the same time, you stay there, but it's not recognized by the community and a lot of bullying and violations against LGBT in many form or uh, many cultures, belief and also religions. But in Thai context, the many people are feel like uh, you can see a lot of transgender. Yes. yes. And you, you will feel like, uh, oh, maybe here is more acceptance. So for me, who are working on this, can you imagine like uh, your family are not accept, the school are not have any rule or any law to protect them by bullying or the text still like promote the violence against GLBT, against our sexual orientation and no law are protected. You know, how can we say this is, this is acceptance? Because actually it shows clearly that you just there, but not recognition, no recognition by anything. And at the same time, exclude from all institution 
and especially for transgender people specifically of that issue is they find difficulty to exit for the job when you cannot exit for the job how can you survive how can you you know like how can you have health and well-being so that means a lot of transgender uh, don't have a job and many are working at the transgender they might facing the other issues uh, that uh, violence from you know like uh, maybe like uh, um, the police or and and being transgender and GLB uh, and transgender uh, um, uh, how to say transgender sex workers is is no law to protect that yeah uh, also I would like you to share about the uh, young LGBTI people uh, what are the special challenges they face, particularly if they belong to the migrant community or the indigenous community? Uh, it has many layers of the problem. Firstly, the educational uh, education, institution of education, not really recognize indigenous, which means that all the curriculum are exclude the issue of indigenous and try to fought them with the Thainese, which means that you need to speak Thai, you know, and your culture are not respects by textbook, by any, any curriculum are not respect the indigenous rights. This is one thing. And then when they're sitting there and teacher teaching about how indigenous in Thailand, you know, like uh, maybe uh, the text will show that you are the root of the problem of global warming because of the way you are planting right is need to starting to cut down the small tree and then you burn this is the rules of the global warming but at the same time it shows clearly by many research that this is how we can stay in the jungle and take care of the jungle when you burn small one but the big one still there and they will grow very fast and then this is keep diversities and but the textbook are never talking about that so there is a first layer and the second layer of indigenous that I working with they don't have the school base in their community which means that they need to travel far away from home to stay under the control of the uh, school and uh, they stay there uh, with take care by the teacher who, 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 who fought to take care of them so this is the second layer that they are really find difficulty of uh, facing the identity acceptance uh, in the school. But plus, if they are GLBT, in their culture are not acceptance, in their family are not acceptance, in the school are not acceptance, which means that they step backwards a lot than the other indigenous. And what they're facing when they are became indig when they are indigenous plus GLBT identities, um, in practice they are GLBT. And but the community always say that we don't have any indigenous we don't have any indigenous who are GLBT. And then which means if they return home, they need to keep their sexual orientation or their gender identity that does match the norm there. So they can be themselves when they are in the cities, but they cannot be themselves when they are in the family. Many are decide to not go back to not go back home because they started to have long hair when their family recognized this is my boy. So they have divided from their their community loneliness from their community that they can be themselves in the big cities like this. You know, you can be themselves. No one care of you but it's no acceptance too and then if you are GLBT you cannot accept the job plus a, a indigenous identity you will more difficulty to accept the job it means that a lot of GLBT who are indigenous cannot accept the job and then what you can do and that's why you see a lot of well-known transgender what you need to recognize is a lot of people who are middle class, they are also GLBT, and you can see them, and you recognize them. But you cannot see much transgender who work at the sick workers, because you are not go to that area. A lot of transgender who are marginalized work at the sick worker, and the society are not recognized. And many are just working in, you know, salon or, you know, 
facing a very difficulty in rural area because even their family not accept community not accept but they cannot move to the cities so they're facing a lot of violations in many uh, much of what uh, key progress has been made in context of SOGI that is sexual orientation and gender identity framework in Thailand and Myanmar and the border areas even the global fund has invested in advocating work in this field so has any progress been made? I think the global movement on GLBT movement is help a lot of country to promote GLBT rights but it's still in a very mainstream and it's focusing on law and policy level but it's not applied to the rural area where um, the multiple identity are applied and many forms of oppression examples now Thailand Thai, or oh, many countries try to put the law of um, um, equal equality marriage which is good to promote GLBT rights and we are trying to working on that but at the same time how we can dealing with the situation of if lesbian bisexual women and you know queer women uh, came out with the family that they are lesbian or bisexual women and then the family fought them to marriage which means that they fought to marry with the guy who they are not love and then have sex this is rape this is rape by by allow from the family and communities which the law of marriage are not protected them at all or transgender who facing violation from their family or from who else or f just feel like oh, this is transgender we can do whatever hit them in the toilet or abuse them or you know do whatever they want which means that that law is not applied to in practice that a lot of GLBT are facing really violation for me it's like we need to prioritize law and policy are so important but we waste all the money there where the people who are facing problem are still facing the problem and a lot of young people are give up of the school which means that they don't have a future a lot of GLBT are you know facing violent forced marriage and fought rape by allow from their family or transgender you know have been murders a lot of people die because they are transgenders all of this needs budget all of these need a good policy all of these need the people like me to working on that to promote the right but we never accept any funding from global because we are so small and the number of the people that we are work with so small so the money is just around that area for me it's good but it's not enough we need to waste a lot of money into local level into community into the people that facing the problem especially if there are multiple marginalized identities such as you know indigenous migrant worker refugee no one are working with lgbt in camp so i think this is need to be priority and and at the same time we can working on law and policy or to promote GLBT right this is good but not enough now my last question Macha okay. what does APFF mean to you and to the people you work with feminist movement is is the most important to build up the movement for justice and this is only one movement that recognize how intersectionality are applied to the people especially who are have multiple identity of marginal life identity so to join the APFF is to touching the core that I'm working with because I'm working with young women because I am a lesbian because I'm working with indigenous who are GLBT and they don't have citizenship status I engaging education system uh, institution of education and engaging with UN mechanism I working with the people who living with HIV who are use the drugs you know sex worker who are transgenders this is a good place for me to strengthen my work to meet the people who are facing the same issue and to hand in hand how we can move forward 
where this is a crisis now, the fundamental of human rights are destroyed for, you know, in this period. And this is a very good time that we come back to think about all the world are facing violence, especially who are marginalized. And what we are do so far, we step so small step forward, but when some policy came, we just step back so far and then destroy a lot of money. And this is harm for me to see sister and brother who are feminists and then drawing our own path, how we can moving together in the regional level and also in global level. And the most important, how can I benefit from the global level and bring it back to the community to empower the people from the community to involving with the global movement on justice. This is why it's so important. And I'm really proud to be here and feeling too privileged to be here and speak on behalf of many people who are not here because they cannot speak English, because they are in the community, because it's so hard for them to leave the community to Chiang Mai, because the, the law are not allow them to move. So I need to do that. But in long term, what I'm trying to do is I'm empower them. And soon, many young people will join APFF for the next time. I'm sure that we will have a lot of indigenous GLBT who use this space to speak about their own issues. This is my dream. Thank you, Marcia, so much for espousing the cause of your community and being their ambassador in the true sense. Friends, you were listening to Marcia von In, a Thailand-based lesbian human rights defender and gender advocate with whom Citizen News Service was in conversation with at the third Asia-Pacific Feminist Forum or APFF 2017, which is being held in Chiang Mai, Thailand. APFF 2017 is organized by the Asia-Pacific Forum on Women, Law and Development or APWLD. For more details, be welcome to check out APWLD's website www.apwld.org or visit CNS at www.citizen-news.org. Thanks for listening and stay tuned. Thank <laughs> you.